couple of months ago, I bought my first set of watercolor and I fell in love so hard and so fast. But it made me wonder, does the supplies you use actually matter? And while no, not a whole lot, I have found that it's a lot of fun to try different supplies and figure out which ones are my favorite. So today, we're gonna test four different kinds of watercolor paper and I think you're gonna be shocked at the results. We go from a high end, all the way down to a low end. Let's get into it and let's try watercolor paper. Hey there, I'm Gina. I'm the girl behind the Shabby Creek Cottage and if this is your first video, welcome. And if not, welcome back. I'm always glad to see you. And in this neck of the woods, we make fun art, not fun art, and I'm here to help you make your home and life a work of art. So if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure that you smash buttons and bells and you know, the YouTube stuff. If you enjoy art things and you want to take my free classes, Make sure that you find the link for my School of Fun Art in the description of the video. So, let's test some watercolor paper. For this comparison, we're choosing four different watercolor papers and we're starting with the most expensive. These are in no order other than this one was on top of the stack. This one is the most expensive. It is from Speedball Art. Um, it is the Fluid 100 Cold Press Finish Watercolor Paper. I bought this at an art store in Denver. This was the most expensive art paper I've ever bought, but I wanted to treat myself. This is a 300 pound. The rest of these are 140 pound. So this one is double the thickness, and I think that should be noted. But the others, this one is the Michaels brand Artist Loft and it is 140. It's also cold press. It says heavyweight cold press. This is their level two, which is like a mid-grade. This is Strathmore. This is a really common watercolor paper. This one is um, cold press as well, 140 pounds. So it's, it's a good size paper. And then I'm using the Canson watercolor paper. It's once again, 140. 140 pounds. Um, it's cold pressed. So to make things short and sweet on video, I pre-cut um, little ATC cards or two and a half by three and a half inch cards. I cut four of each one. I did Artist Loft. This is the Strathmore. This is the Speedball. This is the most expensive one. And then this is the Canson. Very obvious that this one and this one, there's a lot of difference in thicknesses between the two, so I know for sure this one is the Speedball. I'm gonna try to be as objective as, as possible though. The other thing I'm using is Koi watercolors. I like this one. I bought these at the same time that I bought this. I also like um, the Windsor and Newton Cotman colors. They work really well too. I have those here, um, but for you can see this is my most used one. I travel with this guy and he, he goes everywhere with me. But today we are gonna use the um, the Koi watercolor. I feel like the vibrancy is a little uh, better and I'm gonna use my mystery bottle and just mist it all. First of all, I'm gonna do some wet on wet. So I'm gonna wet half of this paper, lots of water. I wanna see how much water I can kind of get it to hold. And also, water is what makes it flow, and you get that flowiness that a lot of people like. And then we're gonna pick up some purple. I'm gonna go down through the edge and kind of go on either side. I'm gonna go all the way around the corners and really put a good dab of purple in the corner so that I can see how far it will bleed. I'm also just gonna go down through here with a simple line and a thinner line, just so that I can kind of show what that looks like. I'm gonna clean my brush, do the same thing on this one. I'm also working it quite a bit so that I can see how much pressure can I put on the paper before I overwork it. Because cheaper papers sometimes you can overwork them pretty easily. Next one, this is the thicker paper. I can already tell you that this paper, it's a different paper altogether because it's cotton. It's the only one that's 100% cotton paper. I can already feel it peeling up the texture of the paper. So you don't, you can't work this paper as hard as you can some of the others. So if you're a brand new watercolor artist, that can be an issue. 
until you learn how to control your brush strokes. This one is the first one that we did and it's already starting to dry and it did bleed. So it helped the color bleed quite a bit with this paper. This one, I don't feel like it has bled much at all. I don't know if you can see that, but it has not, it's barely bled whatsoever. This one has also bled pretty well. And this one is, which I just finished this one. It, it hasn't really had time to bleed, but it's not bleeding much at all. I really like to do scribbles on top of watercolors. So I want to do um, a watercolor uh, crystal on each one of these. And I'm going to use this like pinky red color. I'm really interested to see if this shows up the same on each and every paper. Right. I'm do, using the exact same color on all four, probably a similar shape, I kind of freeform them. So it may not be exact. I'm actually going to go back, I think, and do a second one um, on these as well. This is the dry brush technique where you go straight from your watercolor to the paper without brushing it with water first. So I'm going to do a second one on all of these where I do it. Or wet the paper first. So I'm starting now to do the wet method where you wet the paper first and then you go back and you add your watercolor. Okay while I was letting these dry I do want to make a note that I finished this one. My battery died on my camera. I finished this one and then I realized uh, this particular paper, this one down in this corner, I had actually done the back side because it was just sitting on top of the paper and it wasn't soaking in at all. And it's because I was using the wrong side. So I did do a second one and you can see, I do want to point this out, you can see a huge difference. It's, this is the same piece of paper, but this is the right side, this is the wrong side. So if you are new to watercolor paper, yes, the side absolutely makes a difference. Um, I did all of these and they're all dry now and I want to do a couple of things. First of all, I want to um, sketch on top of this because I like to sketch on top of my watercolor paper to make stickers um, out of my watercolor pieces for journals and um, that kind of thing. So I wanted to make sure that my pen, and I like to use a Sharpie S gel pen, and I just, this is, I like to call them sketchy stickers. I don't know what you wanna call them, but that's what I call them. <laughs> and I literally make very rough lines just so that I can um, kinda outline. I like the sketchy vibe of it. And so I wanted to test it with the paper. Make sure that you're testing them in a way that you would actually use them. Because um, while on the surface I might like one, whenever I go to actually use it, I may decide I like a completely different one based on how it reacts with my pens. So we got one more test I'm gonna do. These, these turned out pretty good. This was the only one I didn't like the pen on the others all work perfectly fine. The last thing I wanted to do a test on, and this is what we're gonna do. Let me grab my watercolors again. We're gonna do it with a pretty dark color. And the reason why is, I'm gonna do it right here just on the corner of each one of these. I'm gonna do it with a pretty dark color. And I'm just gonna grab it. First of all, I'm gonna wet my paper first with the mark. And then I'm gonna take a piece of paper, towel, and try to pull it back up. I'm also gonna do it with a lighter color so I can show you the difference. Let me clean my brush again. Do it with a peach, peachy color as well. That way you can see how hard it is to get these colors to pull back up. A lot of times if you go back over it and mark it with your finger, you can get most of it back off. I'm not sure if it'll work on the gray, but we're gonna try it. I work it with my finger and then pull it back off. So we're gonna do all of these and I'll tell you which ones I think will do the best. Pull it off. Okay, now that we're all done, here's the test that I did. I wanted to see how much it would warp and distort the paper. This one, it distorted it quite a bit. 
This one, it did as well. You can tell the ends that had a lot of water on them though, like these squares had a ton of water. So we need to make a note of that. This one, it didn't distort it a ton. It did a little bit, but not as much as the others. And this one, it barely distorted it at all, which I thought was pretty cool. I really thought it would like soak up the water. So that was a pleasant surprise. Now, as far as how much it, so there's two things that it's, it can do. And I think these are a good example to show you the difference. So there's two different terms that we need to think of. One is bleeding, where you can obviously see the lines that bleed out. And fluidity is where it flows out into the paper. This one, um, it had a lot of bleeding. It also had quite a bit of fluidity. This one had a lot of fluidity and almost no bleeding. Well, also had a lot of fluidity and bleeding. This one had more fluidity than maybe even this one. It, it's a pretty close, but there's a lot of, of bleeding as well as fluidity with that one. It didn't move on the paper as much as some of the others did. Let me say it that way. It did bleed. You can see right in here. It bled quite a bit, but the fluidity wasn't, you can see in this one, how it softened the edges of that box. It didn't really do that as much on this one. The next factor I want to look at is that stain test to see how much of it can you pull back off. This one, I was able to get quite a lot of it back off. This one, it pretty much stuck there and it didn't like to go anywhere. This one was kind of medium. Quite a bit came off, but there's still um, some visibility to it. This one was not wanting to really budge much. So this one won for being able to remove um, drops where you make a mistake. So for in fixing mistakes, I feel like this one is the winner. I wanna give you all these factors and let you decide for yourself. There's two more things I wanna talk about. The color, the vibrancy. This one absolutely had the most vibrancy. This is that thicker one, so I know for sure it's the cotton paper. I can, that's the only way I can tell. The rest of them, I'm not sure which one is which, but this one had the, like, it held the color the best. This one, I felt like I liked the fluidity and how it held the color, but it dispersed it really well. This one held a lot of texture though, and I really like texture. You can still, still see some of the texture in the color, and I thought that was really interesting. And then this one was kind of, kind of in between. It held quite a bit of the color. It was very, very vibrant. I would say vibrancy wise, it was second to this one and it was a really close second. So you have to take that into consideration as well. And then the last thing I wanted to mention was the mixing, and I've already mentioned this once, but mixing the pen on top of the paper. Some of them were easier to write with. This one was easy to write on. This one was easier to write on. These two were a little more difficult. So you just want to make sure that however you're going to use it, and I've already said it once, but however you're going to use the paper, test it that way. So let's rank. Which one do I like best? Overall, I think this guy is my winner. Number two, I'm going to go with this one. Number three, I'm going to go with this one. And sadly, Number four, I'm gonna go with this guy. I think all of these have great applications for different things. Like if you were doing fine watercolors of landscapes or um, detail work where you wanted a lot of vibrancy and you wanted to like frame it and keep it forever, man oh man, this is a good paper for that. This is probably similar to what they use in like art galleries. This is like fine artist supplies. I'm a fun artist, not a fine artist. So these are gonna be more my speed. And just because of the fluidity and the bleeding and the way that the pen, the Sharpie pen, works with the paper, this one is my number one choice. Number two, number three, number four, I think. You know what, I'm gonna reverse these. I'm gonna reverse them. I'm gonna do two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So let's see which one is which. Number four is the Speedball. The Speedball cotton, it was the most expensive and now I feel really silly for buying it, except for 
I had it for this video. So I guess there's an upside to everything. And B, you don't know what you like until you try lots of things. Secondly is Strathmore, which I'm surprised because usually like if I'm going to buy watercolor paper, that's what I've always bought in the past. Like that's my go-to. So I'm actually shocked that it came in third. The second runner up is Canson. That's a really decent brand. It's a mid-range brand, which means the Artist Loft, <laughs> oh y'all, the Artist Loft, which is the store brand, is my favorite. I never would have thought. I would have, I always gravitate towards Strathmore or Canson if they're out of stock on one of these. I guess I'm an artist loft girl, which makes me want to go try some of the other store brands now. So if you want to see a comparison for some of the different store brands between Joanne and Michaels and the HL, let me know in the comments below. Put um, store brand comparison and I will compare them because if you, walking into this, I thought this one would be the one that I like the absolute least, but apparently it's the one that I like absolutely the most. For my needs, for what I like to use watercolor for, this is my winner. So, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell and all those YouTube things, and I will see you in the next video, probably using this watercolor paper. <laughs> Bye, friends.